Hey guys, my name is Martin and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how Benny Blanco, Marshmallow and Vance Joy made their recent single called You. I really enjoyed the original production and I can't wait to show you my deconstruction. So let's get down to business. So the first element, and that's also one of my favorite elements in the original song, are the guitars. So this is how I recreated them. I used picked acoustic for the verse. With these settings. And on the mixer, I added CLA guitar stereo for some overall processing. It tone shaper to bring out certain frequencies a bit more and also lower the lows and the low mids. An equalizer to get rid of some of the very high end. A soothe to get rid of some resonant frequencies. And an S1 stereo imager by Waves and this just makes the sound a bit wider. And then there is some side chaining going on. And the kickstart, which is also a side chain plugin by Nicky Romero. And that's just turned on in the chorus, just to make the guitar sound more groovy and less in the foreground. So I used the same guitar in the pre chorus. And what I did was I just duplicated the picked guitar and I slightly altered the processing. So it just has a drum shaper to increase the attack and decrease the sustain. And the filter to cut off the harsh high end. Next guitar is a strummed acoustic, also by Native Instruments, and it's playing these chords. So this guitar automatically plays a rhythm, and I didn't want this rhythm to be across the whole pattern, so I exported the guitar as a WAV file, put it back in the project, and created an automation clip. So every third and fourth beat in the bar are a little less audible, because of this automation. And then there's the bass guitars. So I used the Retro 60s by Trillion and I duplicated it for the chorus. So the difference between the first bass and the chorus bass is the processing because the chorus bass simply has a lot more bass. And for that I used Renaissance bass by Waves this just adds some extra low-end harmonics, so the bass is also audible on devices that don't have as much low output. And the kickstart, just to give it that extra sidechain in the choruses. Another thing I did to the chorus bass was make an automation clip, just to make the bass a little more gliding toward the next note. Without this automation clip it would sound like this. So that's it for the guitars, let's move on to the horns. And for this, I only use Session Horns Pro by Native Instruments, and I layered six horns. So it's two trumpets, a flugelhorn, tenor trombone, soft and mellow preset, and the generic section preset. And some of these are playing two octaves. And others like the trombone, flugelhorn and the trumpets only play one octave. So I added these short notes on top of certain notes to make the transitions between certain notes sound a bit smoother and more realistic. And I think that sounds quite nice. I linked all of these horns to the same mix bus, used this SSL E-channel by Waves for some EQ and dynamics, Soothe to get rid of resonant frequencies, Neutron also for some EQing and some compression, um, an equalizer to boost the mids, actually usually I remove mids because it causes muddiness but without these mid frequencies I thought it sounded a bit empty and then there's this convolver which is basically a reverb and that also just makes it sound like it was actually recorded in a room and finally a kickstart plugin once again for some slight side chaining in the choruses so that concludes the horns and let's now look at the keys and the keys the pianos only play in the outro and it's two layers, it's a Maverick piano by Native Instruments and a Noir piano by Native Instruments again. And they sound like this. There's 
there's not much processing going on here. There's just a soothe. Um, but the hard piano preset I felt like that really gave the piano a better sound and a convolver for some reverb. And on the noir piano there is a neutron to make the sound a bit more dark and rich. And the soothe again for the same purposes. So now that we've covered the instruments, let's move on to the drums. And this might look like a lot, but it's actually quite simple. It's a kick. From the Oliver Pack on Splice. And quite some plugins on the mixer channel. There is a glue for compression, an equalizer to boost the low mids and to kind of get rid of some of the low frequencies at 55 hertz. A drum shaper to make the kick less punchy because it also isn't that punchy in the original. At some points I would even say the kick is kind of like drowning in the original and I tried to recreate that effect by just lowering the attack using a drum shaper. Then an SSL EQ which is an analog equalizer just to boost some lows and get rid of some of the low mids, which is kind of contradictory to this EQ plugin. I don't know why I did that, but it just sounded good. And again, an R bass to boost the low end harmonics. And then there's a filter that is automated just to make the kick sound filtered in the verses and the pre-choruses. So next up, there are various layers. There is this very smooth tambourine playing in the background. Then there's various snare layers. And the tom. And together they sound like this. Additionally, and this one already starts in the pre-chorus, is drumsticks. And then in the second part of each chorus, there are some extra snares. So first you have this snare roll. And then you have this snare pattern played by the same snare. And in the second part of the first chorus and throughout both other entire choruses, there is four layers of hi-hats. The next part in the drums are the hand claps. And I think together they sound quite full. Then on the mixer channel there is a glue for some compression and a filter that's automated to make it sound filtered in the pre-choruses. Next we have this deep stomp that serves as a kick layer in the second verse. And this stomp kind of gives this marching effect, like soldiers or something are marching. That's what it reminds me of, and I think that sounds pretty cool. And then there's this subtle loop that's playing in the background in both the pre-choruses and the chorus. And it's filtered in the pre-choruses. Finally, there are these orchestral drums from the Kashmir pack, and it's this sound. And I actually only used the first part of the sound to create these um, orchestral drum rhythms. And then in the final pre-chorus there is the following rhythm. And finally let's look at the effects. So first there is this vocal shot and I actually recorded this with my own voice and without effects that sounds really cringy. I can't sing at all, but thank god there's auto-tune and reverb and filters to make it sound decent. Um, so what I did, I added an equalizer to remove all the unnecessary low end and to get rid of some of the high frequencies. Auto-tune to make it sound in key. A camel crusher for some slight distortion. Little alter boy to change the formant of my voice to make it sound a little darker. A filter to remove all the high frequencies basically. 
and quite a large reverb. And with the effects turned on, it sounds like this. And I know this isn't perfect, but it's definitely better than using no effects. Next there is this reverse breath, so I just took a breath sound from the cashmere pack and reversed it to make it sound like this. There's a slight reverb on it. Then there is this tambourine fill just before the chorus. And finally there is just a few impacts and reverse cymbals and sweeps and transitions and crashes and a church clap. And those are all from the cashmere pack. There's not really anything going on in terms of processing. So that's all quite simple. So that's it for this deconstruction, I really hope you enjoyed watching and if you're interested in hearing my complete instrumental remake, make sure you check the link in the description. If you want to see more content like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon so you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. Take care and see you next time.